Hi, good afternoon. My name is David Bailey, and today I'm going to demonstrate Cumulo Core version 2.64 running on an HP Apollo 4200 server cluster. What you see here from this desktop view is our main view into our Cumulo Core admin console. Um, as you can see here, I have this particular cluster named as Apollo Test. And other things that you're seeing here within this main view is some of our UI uh, tools, which I will go into different aspects of each of these. Uh, the current cluster size, so currently this cluster has 453 terabytes of usable capacity um, in a four node cluster, and I currently have it protected in the EC protection mode. Down here I'm showing current cluster activity both in IOPS and throughput and I can actually drill down into this a little bit more as you can see here I have a, a job running through about four different clients that are generating some load. Now just to show some more details about this cluster let me go up here on cluster and click on overview. In this window what I'm showing is, is the current cluster, the four nodes that make up this cluster which is Apollo, HP Apollo test 1, 2, 3, and 4 if I click on HP Apollo test number one, this will show you the details of this particular node. So again, this is an HP Apollo version 4200 node. It currently has 24 10 terabyte hard drives in it and three 480 gig um, SSDs. Um, all the health on all these drives is good as indicated as you can see here by the, the green check boxes within each of the uh, uh, drive specifications. If I go back here to overview, other things you can see is, is um, of the 453 terabytes that I have available, we've currently used about 151 gigabytes in regards to the data that I'm currently writing to um, this cluster. Uh, the cluster currently has um, both NFS exports created. I've created one here called Apollo NFS. And then I also have some SMB shares created. I have uh, three, I have Slash, uh, I have uh, one called Apollo SMB, and then I have another one called Windows Home Dur. And I'll show you uh, why I created these here in just a second, just to illustrate how you can mount these things to a Windows client. Back to the main dashboard, what I'd like to show you, first of all, is, is just how you would mount the cluster after you build it. So, for example, if I went back here to sharing, and you can see here I have these SMB shares that I created, one called Windows Home Dur, and one called Windows, or excuse me, Apollo SMB. The other thing I've done is, is I've gone into our hard quota uh, uh, system, and from here I've also created a quota on the Windows Home Dur of approximately 250 gigabytes. And the reason I did that is to show you the ability to create um, hard quotas in the system and also limit the amount of capacity any one particular share can see. To illustrate that, let me go over here to a Windows 10 system. As you can see here on this Windows 10 system, I've created two different shares. I've created this Q drive called that I mounted Windows Home Dur to. Um, and as you can see here from the properties of it, I have 250 gigabytes of available space per that quota that I created within the system. I also mounted the entire cluster through this share here, Apollo SMB, um, as the Z drive. And you can see here it has the entire, you know, 400 plus terabytes of available capacity that it could use. So Quota is a, is a nice tool if you want to limit what you're seeing, especially if you're talking about writing individual home directories or creating individual home directories from that perspective um, in this case. Let's go back to the, the main user interface. I'll go back here to dashboard. Um, other things obviously you could do within the system, as I showed earlier, is create NFS exports. I could go in and create you know, um, specific user groups on who you want to mount and use this cluster. Or what most people will do, of course, is, is plug this system directly into an active directory, direct domain, um, to use it from that perspective, from uh, a, a users and group perspective. Uh, back to the cluster configuration. Other things that I can do within the system is set up my network configuration. Currently, I've got my network configuration just set up as uh, DHCP. Um, and then, of course, the DHCP server gave me these particular addresses that you see here assigned to each of the nodes. If I wanted to switch to a static IP address range, very simple. I click on switch to static IP address uh, ranges. I would then go in, select my MTU size, 
provide a range of IP addresses that I want for each of the nodes. I need at least one static for each node in the system. I could also then go in and set up a range of floating IP addresses uh, for the perspective of doing load balancing and attaching this thing to you know, some sort of load balancing server from that perspective. So lots of things I can do here from a network configuration perspective um, via IPv4. Something to just keep in mind, these nodes themselves are intercommunicating through an IPv6 backend. These are all a 40 gigabit interconnect. Uh, from a front end, I'm connecting via IPv4 for the client side drivers that you're seeing in regards to both my NFS and X, uh, SMB exports. If I wanted to, I could also configure this to have an IPv6 front end as well. Other operations you see under the cluster management uh, system, um, I can take snapshots with the system. So if I click here on save snapshots, if I wanted to take a snapshot of the cluster, I could click on take a snapshot, give the, the a snapshot a name. So we'll just call this Apollo test for the, uh, the name of this particular snapshot. Um, as you can see here, I can, even, I can just save it. Um, and I've just taken a snapshot of this entire cluster. Also, what I could do is, is I could go in and set up different policies for my snapshots. So I can view what policies I have. Currently, I don't have anything within the snapshot. So if I wanted to create one, I'd just go back here to save snapshots, take a snapshot. Let's just call this test two for this particular snapshot. I could then create a policy to say I want this thing to automatically delete the snapshot after, say, 99 days and click save. Um, and then the system will go off and, uh, well, here, let me just make it 99 days. There we go. Click Save. And uh, now I've just created a snapshot that will last for 99 days within the system. Very simple to do, very simple and easy to set up. Um, other things I could do in the cl cluster is, is I could add additional nodes. So to add new nodes to this cluster, it's a simple matter of clicking on the Add Nodes button. If there was additional nodes that I could add into this particular cluster, they would appear here in this window. I would tell it to add, um, and then in very few couple of seconds, the system would go off and add that additional node into the system without any reboots of the cluster. The new capacity, CPUs, memory, everything would be added to the entire cluster as a whole. Let's just go back here to dashboard. And again, let's take a quick look at, um, again, the current load that we're seeing both from an IOPS perspective and from a throughput perspective. So currently, you know, if I drill down on this, I'm seeing some pretty nice load here. Here's about 4.2 gigabytes a second in reads and about um, uh, overall about 5 gigabytes a second in reads and writes within the system. Now, if I really wanted to drill down to this and really see the, the real power of Cumulo Core, is, that's where we start talking about the analytics and what's happening within this system. So if I click on Analytics, let's first click on Integrated Analytics. And what Integrated Analytics is going to allow me to do is, first of all, let me just click here on Root. It's going to show me a snapshot of the entire file system as it's currently being written to. It's going to show me how much data is being written to the system so far. So I've only written about 150 gigs to this particular cluster. Here are the top three clients that are currently writing to this particular cluster. You show them by their IP address and then also by a reverse DNS lookup, giving them the name of the server. And then it shows me the top activity by path, meaning what are the top files that are being written to the cluster. That's also illustrated by what you see here in regards to the green lines, which is writes occurring to this particular directory. And then also what you see in regards to the purple in regards to reads. Now, there's other ways to look at this throughput, and that's easy enough by going here to the analytics and clicking on the throughput hotspot. So if I'm trying to figure out if I've got an issue with performance in the system, whether it be through throughput or uh, IOPS, I simply click on this. What this will do is build me a Sankey chart real quick in real time, and it shows me that here from this directory research, um, it's showing me all the different uh, subdirectories that are currently being written to from what clients, and it's a simple matter of, you know, highlighting it. As you can see here, it's currently displaying that I'm writing about, well, right now here, about four gigabytes a second displayed at this directory level, and I can trace that all the way down to the clients. Another way to look at this would be to go in and look at the actual clients themselves. So if I click here on Client under Analytics, what this is going to show me all the clients that are currently mounted to the system. It's going to show to me, you know, in regards to what's the heavy hitters. So all these clients are writing at about the same amount of speed. If I click on this arrow, what it's going to do here is it's going to show me down to the file name what are the current files that are being written to the cluster from that particular client. So now I have a very quick and easy way to go in and see exactly how load is being generated to the cluster, 
from what clients it's being generated from down to the client and file name. So now if I need to trace it back to a particular program, I can do that very easily. No log files to look at, no third-party SRM tools to see. I can look at all of that directly right from this interface. Of course, if I also wanted to look at it from a path perspective, I could look at all the paths that are currently being written into the system down on the file name. And if I click on this arrow, it just basically shows me you know, what client that's coming from. So again, another way to relationally look at the cluster to see what data is being written to the cluster in real time to you know debug any kind of performance problem. So another feature I want to show you is this thing we call capacity training. Now to illustrate capacity training, I've gone to another cluster because here's a cluster that's been being written to for a long period of time and it really allows me to show off this particular tool. So if I go here to analytics and I click on capacity trends, what you'll see is this graph here. Now right now I'm looking at this data that's been written to the system over the last hour by hour over the last 72 hours. I could also look at this chart over say the last 30 days and look at it day by day. Let me go back here to 72 hours and what this allows me to do is the purple line is showing me data that's being written to the cluster and deleted from the cluster in real time. And then the green lines here, for example, here's the data that was written between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. on the 3rd of April. I wrote 241 gigabytes of data here. If I click on that, this will show me the data that was written to the cluster during that time. Any green lines that you see below the line shows me data that was deleted. So here between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. on the 3rd, we deleted 90 gigs of data. And if I click on that, it'll show me the data to the left of this chart, exactly what was deleted out of the cluster. So capacity training is just a nice little tool that allows me to go in and see exactly how the capacity cluster is being used um, in real time over a period of, you know, a year from the time that, you know, this was turned on. So let's go back here to the dashboard. As you can see, I'm continuing to write data into this system. Another important thing that we've built into the system is this ability that everything you see here is done through REST commands within this entire interface. Um, therefore, the system is completely programmable from a REST API interface. To make it easy to understand how to do that programming and give you examples of what that code may look like, you can click here on the API and Tools button and what the API and Tools button will do is, is it gives you this IO Docs interface. So for example, let me just get started by logging in here real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my username and my password and click Try It. Now what's going to happen is, is the system is actually going to go off and create me the JSON on what it would take to actually generate that login through a REST interface. And as you can see here within the, within the system, we have numerous other things that we can do. Everything that I could do in the UI, I could do through this interface. I can do it through this interface. I can also do it through a set of command line tools as you see here above here. So for example, in regards to things that you saw that was happening in regards to the analytics, um, I could go here to the analytics subsection of IODocs if I wanted to get some time series statistics. I could click try it. The system will go through, generate me the JSON code, it'll test it, and, you know, and here you can see the results that are coming through. So I could actually go off and run this as a REST call to any kind of third-party tool that I might want to look at this data without actually being logged into the cluster as an administrator. Finally, the last thing I want to show you is our support tool. So our support tool gives you the ability to turn on not only Cumulo Care. Cumulo Care is our cloud-based monitoring tool that you could edit and um, join in from any particular customer. Um, this would allow us to collect analytics data about the system, service data about the system. Um, anytime there might be any particular issues such as a failed drive or other component, we would get alerted through our customer care operations. And then if we needed to and needed the ability to get into the system from a a VPN perspective, of course, that's all done, you know, per customer permission. We could go in and edit the, the remote support site and allow that um, permission so they could come in and view that system overall and help you out with any kind of support case. The other thing under support is, is our software upgrade. Very easy to do software upgrades under Cumulo Core. You simply download the upgrade. You list where the upgrade is at. You hit upgrade, this upgrade button. The system will distribute that upgrade to all nodes of the cluster and then reboot the Cumulo Core application uh, to have that new OS up and running very, very quickly. So uh, very easy interface to uh, do upgrades within the setup of Cumulo um, and there and so forth. So um, 
I believe at this point that's all the stuff I wanted to show you as a quick demo of this system. Again, we're uh, really happy to be working with HP um, and running Cumulo Core on the HP 4200 servers. Uh, we look forward to continuing to run this on these servers and other server platforms that they have you know, within their, uh, their SKUs. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of your HP Alliance Manager or one of us here at Cumulo, and we'd be happy to give you more demos and uh, demonstrations of everything that we can do within the system. Thank you very much.